try something um, a little different today, uh, but also the same. The last video we did, um, 42, we drew a pileated woodpecker. And, um, you know, it was really kind of fun uh, drawing it. We just did it in pencil. I did add a little bit of uh, red pencil there, but kind of learning about them. So I thought, let's do the same thing again, but with a little bit more color. And how about if we did this guy in color crayons? So that's what we're gonna do today. I hope you like it, and I hope you learned something. I'm Miss Therese, welcome to Art with Miss Therese. I've got my new crayons, and um, I did spend a little bit this last week and bought myself a new set of crayons. And actually, it did come with a black crayon, which I have been missing for some time. I think I've talked about that. Um, I've got a little tray here. So the crayons that I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna pull them out and put them here in the tray. Here's the, the colors that I picked out. I've got black, a couple colors of gray, some red, white, some green, and some blue, and a little bit of brown. But I also have a purple, and that's because, and we'll do this at the end of this, if you don't have any of the conventional colors to draw this guy, our pileated woodpecker, then, then you can also use other colors. So I'm gonna start out by doing a border or a frame, and kind of a nut about that. And again, I'm going to keep my, my heel of my hand down and pull. Now, if your crayons aren't this sharp, you could have a grown-up help you, or you could do it yourself. I trust you guys. You could peel your crayon down and go into your kitchen, if you need to ask for some help, and get a paring knife and kind of, kind of whittle that thing down so it's a little bit a little bit sharper. You know, the more things you can learn to do to take care of your materials and have them last longer, I think the more fun it is. So there's my border. And I think ahead of time right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put down my initials. And oh my gosh, it's 2021. So I'm just gonna put that there, just kind of down in the corner. Now, I think at this point, I'm gonna go grab my my black, which which I haven't had a black crayon in a while. I'm gonna really have some fun with it. And what I did ahead of time, let's kind of look at this guy while he's while he's clinging on to the to the side of a to the side of his uh, of his tree. He's got a really long head, and half of that is beak, and half of that is his head and the tip of his uh, crest. He's got a big strong neck, which is just about as wide as his head. A nice strong body. All right, which is a little egg shape. I think we've talked about that before. And a, and a strong tail, which is kind of balancing him while he's hanging on with those really sharp claws. So what I did ahead of time, and you can do this too, just take your, your crayon, and at this point you could use any color because we're just, we're just learning how to do this guy. Go ahead and do kind of an oval shape for his head. All right, we're just gonna, we're gonna kind of block these things in. Kind of below that, Let's do a little teardrop shape for those wings, okay? And again, because you're drawing in crayon, you're not gonna be able to alter that or erase it. So if you have scrap paper, well, that's the part I forgot. I said we're gonna need, um, in addition to crayons, probably white paper. You can use scrap paper too. Um, you can work big or small. But um, just if you have some extra paper around um, and you don't like your line, you know, my line isn't exactly what I want here, but what I'm doing, and again, I'm kind of going over some pencil that I did ahead of time. You can do that too. Forgot about that part. And then this is gonna be sort of, sort of the chest right there and the body, which is kind of almost like a little bit bigger egg. It's kind of an egg-shaped oval there, egg shape there. And then we're gonna do another, kind of a crescent down here for those for those uh, wing feathers or for those tail feathers. Now you'll notice I'm kind of going over my drawing. I'm kind of sketching it. If you are a little more sure when you're doing things, I'll show you here. If you're a little more sure doing things here of going ahead and drawing it straight like this and you're, you're a little more, more comfortable with just a line down on your, on your page, go ahead and do that. I have a tendency, that's a little bit more, more of a straight, straight one that way. I have a tendency that I kind of like to sketch. That's just my style. And that's something, whatever style you have, we're gonna do the crest down here. Whatever style you have, 
is 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 probably going to be is going to be the best for you. And also try different styles. Even if you settle on one style, try a different style. Okay, so now all I'm doing here is I'm just connecting those lines to the beak. Put like an eye here. And that eye's got a little bit of an almond shape to it. Remember what we did last time? We left a little, little, little sort of corner of white to make that eye look shiny. So that's, that's, this is just kind of my sketch here. Now I've got the whole bird here. Let's do, let's get that leg out there. So there's the, there's the leg, there's kind of the joint where that little claw, or big claw I should say, with those sharp talons. Talons are kind of the, sort of like the nails on the end of, of claws. Those sharp talons are kind of hanging on to that wood. And again, I'm going to do my tree down here. I'm just doing half the tree, the rest of the tree is over on this side. And I'll have that other leg right there. You can see that kind of hanging on. So this is just a way to sort of start this out like this. I'm going to go back to here where, where I have my, my border and my kind of my final drawing. One thing I would suggest, kind of have a bunch of these around so that you can practice. I always think it's kind of interesting if you have the time, and I think with the videos, you can always start them and stop them again. And once, say, say your homework is done and you want to have something kind of fun to do. And maybe, I'm going to probably get in trouble for saying this, but maybe instead of getting on those computer games, you could spend a little bit of time drawing. And you might find that it's a little bit more fun and honestly a lot better for your brain. So if you have your sketch that you did before, you can use that as reference material too. So I'm going to start this again. This time I'm going to start kind of at, the, at, at, at his crest there. And there's a little bit of where the, the skull ends. And then there's that nice, long, super sharp. I think I talked about this before. Those beaks are self-sharpening. Put the eye back in here like that, leaving a little bit of white. Those beaks are, are self-sharpening, which I just love that whole idea. Isn't that wonderful that nature really is very efficient. I'm going to do that teardrop shape again for the wing and this might even go off the page a little bit. That nice curve for those that really strong tail. The tail's kind of got two sections to it. It kind of comes together when they fly. When they're perched sometimes it'll kind of split apart. I'm going to go up again Notice that when we drew this, this the 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 um, its its leg and its claw is is almost like right underneath the beak when it's when it's sort of clinging on here. I bet you this guy's about ready to hammer in and go find some termites or some carpenter ants. I learned some of the names of the insects they like. Um, they eat a lot of bugs and insects or insects that really are a little destructive to trees so they're really kind of beneficial. Let's add a little bit of bark kind of texture here. Maybe I'll bring that out there. They eat a lot of, of, of things which are kind of destructive to the trees and then you know in the summertime when we've got a lot of blackberries out they'll come eat the blackberries too. So there's kind of our basic and again, just a little reminder to you, you can slow this down. There's our basic sort of crayon, um, uh, pilated woodpecker, just love that name. And then he has almost like a little bandit mask, or she, I'm not sure whether it's a boy or girl, has a little bandit mask around the eye. And then, and then that kind of comes up almost to the edge of the, of the neck there, but it kind of stops right there, comes in like that. And I think we talked about this before, sort of makes that almost like a little lightning kind of shape. 
That almost looks like lightning there, doesn't it? And it's going to kind of come from there out to here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to color in all the black area. And I'm going to kind of start kind of light because, again, with crayons, I can always go darker. And I'm going to leave a little tiny bit of white around that eye. That's going to kind of give him a little bit more character, a little more definition. And then the wing has a little bit of white at, at the edge of the wing there. And we're just going to color this in here. When I'm coloring, I'm using lots of different kinds of crayon strokes. I'm kind of going long and back and forth, especially when I'm doing like the, the long, smooth wing feathers. I think if you think about what you're drawing, and you're going, well, now how is that going to look when I draw it that way on the page? But you can use any kind of technique that you want. The important thing, like I've always said, is that you really enjoy what we're doing here. Now, my surface is a little bit bumpy, so I might not get as smooth a, a, um, an effect as you, but I kind of like the effect I'm getting. And I'm going to come in here like this. Now, when I've got black on black, I'm just going to leave a tiny edge here like that. Do you see how I did that? I'm just going to leave a little tiny edge of white. And what that's going to do is that's going to kind of act like a line to kind of divide the body up between the, that's going to be, that will be dividing, boy, not saying things very well today. That will divide the body up between the, the uh, wing. So, so you can kind of see the difference between that. And again, I'm kind of using longer, I'm not going as hard as I can. I'm just kind of really sort of, kind of firmly filling this in. And I'm going to do something fun with some of the other crayons when we're towards the end. All right. And again, when you come up, if you look at our little reference drawing, and I still saved my calendar drawing. You can see that there. Um, you'll notice that this kind of comes into the beak a little bit, and that lower beak can be a little bit, can be a little bit dark. That lower beak can be just a little bit dark. A little bit lighter on the top, that's kind of what I'm doing there. And the end of the beak kind of is like that. And then I'm going to add a little nostril, because the guy needs to breathe. And then that's the back leg there. I might make that a little bit darker. This leg is in front here. And just very lightly doing those claws. Now this claw turned out a little thicker than I want, but I still kind of like the effect. And then I'm going to take my, my uh, black here and I'm going to peel it. You know what, this is when I really miss my students because I think I've talked about this before. I have some students that are the fastest crayon and oil pastel peelers on the planet. I'm going to just put my scraps in here so I don't make too much of a mess. So I'm going to put um, my black away for just a second here and I'm going to grab a gray and what I'm going to do with that gray is I'm going to come over that black and that's kind of lets me blend it a little bit which is really kind of fun and again if you don't have black and you don't have gray we'll do a quick one here in purple you could use any colors the important thing for you right now is to kind of understand how to make the shapes and, and kind of just how to make things work. You know, this is another fun thing. I've talked about this before, too, is I love to listen to my crayons on paper. See how I kind of smooth that line out? My crayons on paper, um, my pencils on paper. I just love the sound of, of drawing. And you really can't get that. I know somebody's going to have some objection here. You can't get that on a computer. You really can't. I'm going to come back in with the black here a little bit like that. But, but when, you're, when you're drawing using paper and pencil and crayons, you know, you can really, 
you can really participate. And also, crayons kind of have kind of a fun little smell to them. They have kind of a crayon smell. You're going to kind of darken that beak a little bit with the gray, like that. These birds can vary a little bit in their coloring, of course. And this is a lighter gray. And I'm just going to do maybe a little bit of shading there, a little bit there, maybe a little bit there. And then I'm going to come back in with my black. And I'm going to just kind of at the ends here darken. I really like darkening things. Look what happens when that black goes over the gray too. It's one more layer that lets that black really kind of, kind of become darker. That's, that's a lot of fun things that you can do with crayons. It's just, like I say, sort of experimenting and seeing how to use them. See how I can really get that black in there after I put the gray down? And again, like I say, you could do this kind of like with any color and a little bit of texture there. Sometimes those, those feathers will have a, a black stripe to them like that. And then my red, okay, I've got two kinds of red here. Let's see what they say. One says, oh, you know what's happening now with crayons? This is so interesting. They are putting the name of the crayon in three different languages. It has, oh, here, let's read the red one here. It has English, this says violet red, and then it has Spanish, rojo violeta, and then it has French, rouge, rouge voilette. And isn't that kind of fun? So you could actually, with your crayons, you could almost use another language. You know what? I never even thought about that. You could go through your whole crayon box and learn different words in Spanish and in French. Huh. They don't have that on the box. They probably should. Now, this was a little bit of a pinker, because it's got some violet in it. It's red violet, rouge violet. Um, so I'm going to lay that down. And like we were talking about with, with um, the gray and the black, I'm going to come back in here, look at my crayon box, and let's see if I have true red. Let's see. What does this one say? That one's red violet. Don't tell me they didn't give me a red. Oh, no. You know what's happened? Somehow, in the transport of these crayons, this always happens in one box. Okay, guess what? My red, <laughs> my red lost its point. So, no big deal. I'm just going to peel it. And again, kind of put the peel in my little box here. Is that too funny? Honestly, you just never know. And um, I'm going to come back over. So if you mix a couple different kinds of reds, you're going to get more of a vibrant, way more of a vibrant red. So we've only used three colors here. We, we've used black, we've used gray, and then I could be conventional. Well, you know what, I'll partially be conventional. I'm going to have this tree, have a little bit of brown with it. Now, notice what I'm doing here. I'm kind of holding the pencil like this. I'm not holding it like this. I'm kind of holding it differently. So that's so that I can kind of get a little bit better of a line that I like like this. Now you probably wouldn't find it very easy to write your name holding a pencil like this. But this is just another way to hold things or another grip. It's how you're gripping the pencil. Okay. And then I'm going to take, I've got another gray here. I'm going to take a different gray. I'm going to do the same thing. And again, I'm not holding it like this. I'm holding it like that. So try experimenting um, on different ways to hold, whether it's a brush or an oil pastel or a crayon, to see what kind of effects you can get and to see how, see how, here's a big word, see how proficient, which is kind of a word for getting really good at something. See how, see how really good you can get. Now my background, I could do green. Um, which would be, you know, maybe I'll do green because maybe this guy is out in my yard and it's summertime. But you could also do orange, you could do purple. And again, I'm going to try that this grip here. And this is going to be my background. And I'm just going to kind of come up to the edge, edge of this guy and kind of leave a little bit of a white line there. You don't have to do that. 
but I'm kind of feeling like doing that today just so that he stands out a little bit more or she I don't know if it's a if it's a girl woodpecker or if it's a guy woodpecker who knows so we're going to do this this way so I'm just going to fill this in for now and then I'm going to show you another trick And one color of green. I think I'm going to do the same trick I did with the black and the gray. I'm going to grab, how am I feeling? I'm going to grab a super light green like this and I'm going to kind of go over that. It's almost a yellow green. Oh wait a minute, let's see what this says. And It's going to be in three languages. It says green yellow and then it says Amarilla Verde, which is Amarilla must be, must be yellow, Verde is green, and Jaune Vert, which is um, yellow green huh I think every time I use my color crayons I'm gonna really practice on learning something else too and again I'm using that same grip with this and I'm not being super precise I'm just really having fun layering things in and you can always as my dad would say, you can always kind of tighten things up at the end, but it's kind of fun just to, just to layer things in like this. And again, I left a little bit of white around my bird here, which just kind of makes it sort of, sort of, out, kind of outstanding. And I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna add, you know, I found, okay, let's see. This says olive green, verde oliva, and there or leave. Okay. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come back with my original green that I used. I think that's it and just kind of like I did with the black and I'm going to come back in I'm going to go the other direction and look how that really beefs up it's my dad saying beefing up something look at how that kind of really beefs up the color and it's really interesting because we've got a couple different greens going on in here and it's going to make for a really interesting background and and I could have added leaves back there I could have added trees I could have made it a little bit of a landscape but the important thing in this picture is this bird here and so I really wanted to emphasize this woodpecker so I decided to make the background a little bit plain okay now I'm going to do what my dad used to call tightening up. I'm just going to come around the edges here and just kind of tighten that up a little bit. Just sort of clean up the edges that you could leave them a little bit, a little bit shaggy like that. But I thought, you know, I think I'd like to make this look just a little bit, a little bit more precise how's that and I can do the same thing with the tree the tree's not my most important thing here so I'm just going to sort of just on both of those ends and again I'm I'm holding the the crayon with a with that different grip it's kind of fun to sort of really cover areas that way and also I found that it keeps my hand from cramping up sometimes <laughs> Oh my gosh, there's my dog. Um, Sai, my dogs always have to get in on something. But I found sometimes when I'm coloring a lot, and I think you might find this too, that sometimes your hand might cramp up. You know, drawing to a certain degree, there might be some people that disagree with me, is like an athletic event, all right? You're, there's a lot of 
hand-eye coordination, and it's like soccer. The more you're going to practice, or skiing, or playing the piano, or baseball, or whatever it is you're doing, the more you practice, the better you're going to be. There's your, your pileated woodpecker, made out of crayon, with um, some interesting things we've done with the crayons, like layering them, and I think also kind of having the confidence just to go ahead and, and draw it, even if your lines aren't what you want, the first time you do it, you can do it again. The second time you do it, the third time you do it. And honestly, sometimes I get discouraged too, but whatever. So we're going to draw the same thing with, with uh, purple. We're going to start with that bump between the skull or head and that crest. And then we're going to do the same. Remember, that's the, the length, that really sharp beak, and that strong neck like that kind of dips in there and then he's got he's probably got some pretty good muscles there do the eye right there like a slight almond shape same principle here leaving that little white spot doing that bandit mask where it comes almost up to the neck and then kind of curves in like that and then I can color it in just like I did with the, with the um, black, get the same effect. Leave a little bit of white around the eye. And this is the same, the whole same thing with the same effect. Come down here with the same part here. I didn't draw the whole thing, but, but the same effect here. Just go a little bit lighter there, right up to where the beak and the skull connect. Put in that little nostril. And, you know, just because, like say you didn't even have any red, you could take your blue and do the crest that way. So you still you still have the same effect with just different colors. You might want to try that just for fun too. I hope you enjoyed this. We took a couple of the things we did the last lesson, lesson 42, uh, sketching our pileated woodpecker uh, with pencil. And of course I still have my reference calendar here. Um, it's really fun to look things up. And I did find out another fact I didn't mention the other time. Um, lots of times in woodpeckers will actually share their big nest <coughs> excuse me with bats or other like smaller birds it you know there's it's it's interesting to see how things work in in nature and um, when their nests are abandoned other birds will come in and, and use them as, as homes which I thought was kind of which I thought was kind of neat so we did a um, color crayon uh, woodpecker today and before we started we kind of looked at some of those shapes and if you just want to practice those shapes ahead of time for a while before you do the the really starting on, on like a fine a more final drawing of the woodpecker you can do that um, just it's kind of egg shapes and sort of curved shapes you can go back and look and if I didn't have the gray or um, black or conventional colors I can still do the whole thing in unconventional colors some of the techniques we learned is, is by layering different different um, uh, color crayons on top of each other, we can get a really, really kind of neat effect. And sometimes somebody might not even think that you could do that with a plain box of color crayons. And one of my favorite things about this whole lesson today is discovering that color crayons come with different languages on them. And that, that I'll bet you the bigger the crayon box, the more language you're going to learn. You take care. I look forward to next time.